Hi there everyone and welcome back to Higher Biology. Today we're going to be taking a look at key area 6 of Unit 1, which is mutations, something you might be able to remember a little bit from National 5. So let's get started. So what a mutation actually is, is a change in an organism's DNA. And as we go into higher, because we've been looking at protein synthesis, we've been looking at DNA, the main point of mutations in higher is that a mutation can either result in no protein being synthesized, or it can result in an altered or a changed protein being synthesized. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. You might remember from National 5 that mutations are spontaneous and they are random. So we can't really predict them, we can't see them coming. Uh, and they tend to be recessive, so they appear in a low number of the population. However, mutagenic agents, things like UV light or smoking, mustard gas, can increase the rate of mutation and give you more mutations. What we're also going to look at in this key area, though, is the effect of mutation on variation and ultimately into evolution. So, mutations normally have a negative or an adverse effect on an individual. However, occasionally these mutations may actually be advantageous, something you might remember from National 5 as well. If they are advantageous, then they'll increase variation and ultimately they'll act as the driving factor of evolution. Okay, and we'll have a look at how that works later on in this key area. So to start off with, we're going to be looking at two different forms of mutations. One is going to be single gene mutations, and the other one is going to be chromosomal mutations. There's quite a lot of information in this part because you need to know the different forms of these different types of mutations and what their effect is. So we're going to start off by looking at the three different types of single gene mutation. So these mutations involve the alteration of the DNA nucleotide sequence, and there's three different types substitution, insertion, and deletion. You can sometimes remember them by the acronym SID, S-I-D, substitution, insertion, deletion. So in this slide, we're just giving a brief overview and I'll give you some examples on the next few slides. For substitution, what happens here is that a nucleotide, a single nucleotide is substituted, it's replaced with a different nucleotide. So the names are quite helpful in this part. In insertion, a single nucleotide is added into a DNA sequence. It doesn't replace anything else. It's just added into it, it's inserted in. And in deletion, it's almost the opposite. A single nucleotide is deleted, it's removed from a DNA sequence. And what I'm going to look at is the different impact that these different mutations have on the rest of the DNA nucleotide sequence. So for substitution, as I said, a single nucleotide is replaced, okay, it's substituted in. So if we look at this normal sequence here in green, we've got A, T, G, T, C, C, A, T, C. If we were to look at this undergoing a substitution single gene mutation, then what you would end up with is maybe something like this. Hopefully you can notice that in this sequence, thymine has been substituted for guanine. That's not impacted everything else in that sequence, but it has impacted that single gene. Now, the effect of this, there could be two types. Either there could be a minor effect, where when this undergoes protein synthesis, you may end up with a different amino acid. So the amino acid may be changed when the protein is being made, and this is called a missense mutation. But we'll come back to that later on, so don't worry if you don't get it just now. So if you look back on the normal sequence compared to the mutated sequence, if you break those into our triplets, and you have ATG as your first triplet, and then originally you had TCC as your next triplet, remember that TCC would have coded for an amino acid. However, now that it's changed to GCC, it's, there's a chance that that's actually going to code for a different amino acid. Okay, we don't know this, but it may actually code for a different amino acid. In that case, that mutation has had an impact. That might be minor, or it may be major. The other thing that can happen is that the change of this amino acid could result in the early production of a stop codon. So if you remember stop codons from protein synthesis, they stop the whole process of protein synthesis. So if in the middle or wherever in this uh, nucleotide sequence, you now have a random stop codon, that means that there's a shorter protein being made. And that's called a nonsense mutation. And again, we'll come back to that later on. Okay, so if you look at insertion now, insertion is when an additional nucleotide is added into a DNA sequence. So nothing's actually being replaced or substituted, there's an insertion going on. So again, we have the same normal sequence here, and this time in the mutated sequence, what we can see is that 
nothing has been replaced, but a guanine base has been added. It's been inserted into the mutated sequence. Now, hopefully in this diagram, you can actually see that the impact this has made to the rest of the normal sequence. This is because by inserting one new uh, nucleotide, one new base, everything else in that base sequence has now been shifted up. And you've now had a direct impact on every other triplet throughout the rest of that sequence. So the effect of this means that all the amino acids that are coded for after that mutation, they are all affected because they've been moved one base pair up. And this is something called a frame shift mutation. Again, we'll look at the different types of mutation uh, in a moment. But a frame shift basically means everything has been moved. You've shifted the frame effectively. So this is a really major impact because you've not just affected one base, you've not just affected one amino acid, you've affected everything else after that mutation. Similarly in deletion, in this case a nucleotide is removed from the DNA sequence. Okay, so we have that original normal sequence is still there, but in the mutated one, there's one less. Something has been deleted. As you can see, there were two cytosine bases there, there's now only one. Now, this really has the same impact, a major impact, as insertion, because you've now affected every other amino acid coded for after mutation, because everything's now been moved one base pair down. And that is still a frame shift mutation. The, the frame has been shifted, is the way to kind of think of that. Okay, so that's the three different types of mutation. But as we've kind of spoke about throughout these, there are different effects. And what we're going to look at are four different types of effects here. We've already went through three of them, the missense, nonsense, and frame shift. But there's also a splice mutation. It could be quite useful for you to have uh, some sort of diagram like this, some sort of table down to go through these. Because as I said, there's a lot of new information in mutations. There's a lot of different parts to remember. So let's go through these again. So you might remember in the missense gene, when we had substitution, one amino acid is changed for another. And this can result in a non-functional protein, or it might have very little effect on the protein at all. One of the good ways to try and remember this is this little quote that missense mutations are a mistake. So if you think if it's a missense mutation, it's been a mistake. Okay, there's a mistake in that amino acid. Okay, and this, again, is probably minor. It's, uh, it, it may result in a non-functional protein or it might have little effect. Nonsense is a similar. Remember, we have our substitution where an amino acid has been changed, but in nonsense, it's been changed specifically to a stop codon. And that's really bad because a shorter protein is now produced. Another quote to try and remember that one is stop that nonsense. So if it's a if the stop codon has been created, then that is a nonsense effect. It's a nonsense mutation, which is pretty bad. So we just went through frame shifts a minute ago, but just so you remember, in either an insertion or a deletion single gene mutation, you end up with a frame shift mutation. And a frame shift mutation causes all of the codons and all of the amino acids, therefore, after that mutation to be changed. And this has a huge effect on the structure of the protein because every other codon, every other amino acid has now been altered due to that one mutation. Okay, so frame shift, as I said earlier on, it's like you shift the whole frame of the nucleotides, either up or down, but you still change them. The last one that we didn't discuss while going through substitution, insertion, and deletion is called a splice site mutation. And really all this is is any mutation that occurs at a splice site, which you hope to remember from previous key areas. If a mutation occurs at a splice site, then the codon for the intron or the exon, so remember the exons are expressed, the introns are just sort of cut away, they may be affected. And this can have a massive impact on the, the protein in general because if the protein is either retained or an exon is cut out, that's a totally different stage of transcription that's now happening. That's not going to be the protein that was originally coded for. So any mutation that takes, the, <laughs> sorry, that takes place at a splice site then is going to have a big impact, okay? And they are just very simply known as splice site mutations. The other mutations that we want to look at now are chromosome structures. So these are some, but if you think of them, they're going to be on a bigger scale because if you affect an entire chromosome, then that's going to have a much bigger impact. And one of the, the things to really know here is that if a mutation affects the, either the structure or the number of chromosomes, so we have a huge effect, it can also just be lethal. Now, there are four different types of chromosome structure mutations. There's duplication, deletion, inversion, 
and translocation. So that's another lot of words that have just been thrown at you. But again, if you note these down and go through them, they're actually fairly self-explanatory. You can work out what's going on. So again, a brief description of these is that in duplication, uh, genes from one chromosome attach to its homologous partner. And the homologous partner is basically the pair of the chromosome. If you think, for example, if you look at a karyotype of humans, then we have the one chromosome from your mother, one from your father. They are homologous partners. Okay, they're the, the sort of identical pairs that they are. So in duplication, the genes are duplicated from one chromosome to its partner. In deletion, fairly simple, we've heard this one before in the single gene mutations, uh, the chromosome actually breaks in two places, and that middle segment of the chromosome between the breaks is detached, it's deleted, it's gone, and that's missing. The inversion is quite a strange one, where it's similar to deletion, there's a break, but instead of the chunk, the middle segment being uh, detached or deleted, it actually turns round. So it turns round and it reattaches. So you still have the same nucleotide sequence there, but it's now inverted. Okay, through inversion, it's turned round, it's in a different order. And finally, translocation, if you just think of it traveling, a chromosome section, section breaks off and it then attaches to another chromosome, but not its homologous partner. So it's not the same as duplication. The section breaks off and attaches to another chromosome. Throughout the next four slides, uh, there's a bit more detail on each one, and there's diagrams which I find are quite helpful for you to be able to actually have a look at these. So, as you can see here in duplication, a set of genes from one chromosome becomes attached to its matching chromosome, its homologous partner, and that leads to repeated genes on the homologous partner. So, if you look at this first chromosome here, there's a break between D, E, and F, where that then will duplicate and then it joins on to its homologous partner, which is right next to it. And you have that duplication where you have DEF, DEF. In deletion, the chromosome, like we said before, breaks. So again, we've got this DEF on the original chromosome. It's broken between the D and the F, and that just falls away, and now G and H move up to the C. Okay, so that section that's been broken is just deleted. It's gone. The chromosome rejoins, but it's now shorter, and it's lost a lot of genetic information which can have a massive effect. Inversion is a really strange one. We're similar to deletion. We have a break at the start of the D and the end of the F. Obviously, these are just normal letters to, to show it. That's not actually the DNA we have. And instead of just disappearing and deleting, it's turned round. So now we have CFED that's been inverted. It reverses that normal sequence of genes, but it doesn't actually affect the number of genes that are there. And then finally, in translocation, one section of chromosome breaks off and attaches to another chromosome, but not its homologous partner. So here we have chromosome one, and we have a totally different chromosome two, where there's been a break, but now part of that chromosome two has translocated to chromosome one, and it's joined on. That then has a massive effect on the genetic information present on chromosome one. It's now longer, and it has an additional bit of information there that should not be on chromosome one. Similarly, chromosome 2 is now shorter, so massive effects on the two chromosomes there. The final part of this key area just starts to talk about evolution, which is going to be the next key area that we're going to talk about. But importantly, you have to know that mutations, and particularly gene duplication, are massively important in order for evolution to take place. It is, it is the, the key point of all of evolution. If everyone just had the same genes, if no mutations took place, then there would not be evolution, there would not be any variation or differences between anyone. It's thought that duplicated genes are able to undergo single gene mutations. So you already have that gene duplicated, and then it undergoes single gene mutations, and then that, in some cases, does not affect the functioning of the original copy of the gene. But what could then happen is a new allele could then appear. That new allele could then give an organism a selective advantage. So if you remember going back to evolution, something that gives you an advantage over the rest of your species effectively as a selective advantage, especially under selection pressures. If that doesn't affect the original gene, then you have the selective advantage and then evolution can then take place. That selective advantage could be have a massive impact. It could be it's a colder area, but you then have longer hair than anyone else. You're going to be able to survive and reproduce and pass on your genes that have mutated. This diagram here shows a bit of a, a simple aspect here where you have eight different genes, but if you imagine genes five and six undergo a duplication chromosome mutation. So the chromosome mutation first, so you now have two copies of five and six, but five and six have not been changed, so 
it's not going to cause any sort of fatal mutation to you, you're going to survive. However, if a single gene mutation then took place in gene 5, and this mutation could be the source of a new allele, any sort of allele that gives you a selector advantage, that is the starting point of evolution. And then we're going to be looking at that in the next key area on how these mutations then have a massive impact on how different species evolve. Uh, we'll be building on the information from speciation in Natural 5 and looking at different examples of how evolution takes place. So again, here's what you need to know from mutations. Like I said, there's a lot of information here, so try and make sure that you go through this and you know both uh, examples and effects of single gene mutations. You know examples of uh, gene mutations or uh, sort of uh, chromosome mutations and that you know the starting point of how that can actually impact evolution. That's going to build on key area 7, evolution, which I'll be building up soon. Uh, I'll attach a quizzes as well if you want to get on with some questions. And thank you very much for listening. I will see you again for key area 7, evolution.